So the first country we dropped off at was Japan, so Tokyo. And we only really were in Tokyo, not so much other cities like Osaka and Kyoto. So definitely I will come back sometime in the future to experience those cities as well. But anywho, I wanted to share with you guys our itineraries for each city and country. So first we checked into the hotel and had dinner that night. And then from there we had a traditional tea ceremony, which was pretty cool. And we also went to the Shibuya Sky Observatory and got to see like an aerial view of the city of Tokyo. We also went to the Yogi Park and Mijijingu, Harajuku, which is like a pretty big fashion scene for Japan, I believe. And the hotel was pretty interesting. Like I already knew beforehand that Japan, well Tokyo specifically, has like less space in comparison to the United States or even my state Texas because Texas is so huge and so our hotel room it was pretty tiny but it was very effective. I appreciated how they provided house shoes. Normally when I go to American hotels they don't have house shoes. I wish they did because I do not walk on floors without House shoes at all. We were actually just in time for cherry blossom season and I had no idea that it was so short. But yeah, it was so beautiful. And one of the things we got to do, I seen on the itinerary, was to wear traditional Japanese kimonos. Like we actually got to choose which design, which kimono that we wanted. And I knew beforehand that I wanted something purple and I found just the right one for me and it was so, so beautiful and it also came with like shoes to wear, traditional shoes. One thing I kind of had to do with the kimono was to change my breathing style because since it wraps so tightly around like this area and I breathe a certain way, I had to adjust that so I could, you know, be comfortable. And also with the tea ceremony that we did, so we were making matcha tea and that was actually my very first time having matcha like I never even had in the States. And it was pretty good. And even like later in Korea, we had matcha again, this time in ice cream as well as in cheesecake. I'm definitely going to have that more often. Now, one of my favorite things about Japan specifically outside of like seeing and being there was also the fact that we were just in time to witness firsthand a traditional Japanese wedding. It was so beautiful. You could literally just see like all the photographers rushing in as soon as the bride and groom walked Walk through you can see the ushers accolades I'm not sure how you would refer to them but the two girls that were in white clothing and then the flute player and I love seeing the flute player because I played flute for years in high school marching band and all that but yeah it was it was amazing and I hope that couple is doing well right now as we speak so another thing that we got to do that wasn't on the itinerary was going to a Shiba Inu dog cafe and that was very very wholesome because I had left Left my dog all the way miles and miles away back home in Texas. He was at my parents house during that time ripping up the doors and walls. There's so many scratches. I'm so sorry mom and dad. But anywho, I needed that because I really really missed my son and with this dog cafe we actually had to reserve for it because it was really really popular. When you get in there you have about 30 minutes to visit the dogs but then after that you got to get out because there's so many people in rotation but yeah that was nice and another thing i really liked about japan with their airports and overall transportation systems like with their bullet trains was how accessible they were with their languages like over the intercom you would hear things being said in not only japanese but also english and mandarin chinese and korean you don't really see that in the states as much From there we went to first Busan, South Korea and one of the things we got to do in Busan was a cooking class and two of the meals that we cooked were seafood pancakes which was pronounced as Hamu Yun, Yun? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, oh my gosh. And the other one was stir fried small octopus with gochujang sauce. I am totally butchering this, oh my gosh. And that was pronounced as Nakjibok. Oh my gosh, I need to be fluent in Korean and Japanese. This is ridiculous. See, that is one thing that this 
trip has motivated me. It has motivated me to really take learning these languages seriously. Like I already know a lot of phrases after watching, you know, years and years of Korean dramas and animes and all that, but I still don't feel very confident pronouncing it myself. But anywho, the cooking class was so much fun. It was very educational as well. So the person who was teaching us, fun fact about her, so she actually did, I believe undergrad or maybe graduate school in Texas where I am also based. So we made that connection there. And she was really great about teaching the history of a lot of traditional Korean foods and ingredients. Another thing we did in Korea was surfing. And that was actually my very first time really getting into the ocean. I mean, just a couple of weeks prior, I had been in Corpus Christi for a girl's trip with some of my friends, so we went to the beach, but I only got like my lower body in the water. I didn't get like my whole face and you know mouth and all that into it. So that was my first time actually tasting salt water. And now I understand why it is salt water because it is in fact very, very salty. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. So with the surfing, I never really could stand up all the way. I kept my leg just it was locking up. It wouldn't allow me to take that extra step, but I did get about halfway through. Now, the person that I was traveling with, she did a lot better than me. So Amber, if you're watching this, you did wonderful. Another one of the excursions specifically for South Korea, both in Busan and Seoul, was going to some of their universities, like their top schools. And that was really nice because, you know, as an education content creator, it was pretty interesting to see how their schools function in comparison to the United States. And honestly, there were a lot of similarities. Of course, I didn't really get to experience what it's like inside the actual classroom. I was just more so, you know, touring the exterior of the campus and some of the interior, like their libraries and public places, but not so much the classroom. And so I can't really speak on that. That's not my experience with this. But anywho, with those campus tours, so for Busan, we had a group of students who specialize in being tour guides for their university. And then for the other two, our tour guides were instead these students, well, two students who were with the World Strides program studying abroad there. Another thing that we did in Korea was making our own stamps in Hangul. And if you don't know what Hangul is, that is the actual written language for Korean. And honestly, that was kind of hard engraving our name in it because that's what we were doing. We were engraving our first name in Hangul characters and I was having some difficulty trying to get like certain shapes. It kind of reminded me actually of like when I watched Squid Games and you know how they had those honeycomb cookies and some shapes were harder to carve out than others. Like if you had the umbrella, that was harder to do. So it kind of reminded me of doing that. But overall, this experience motivated me so very much to, for one, try more cultural foods because I have a really bad habit of just eating the same exact things and never really venturing outside of that. So after experiencing the meals in Japan and Korea and just how great they were, like, oh my gosh, send me back right now. I just need to try more foods outside of my own culture or outside of typical American food. Anywho, that's all for today's video. Make sure you go to my bio link and also follow me on my other socials such as TikTok and Instagram. And I also created a travel diary, a digital travel diary uh, detailing my experiences in both countries. So if you want access to that, simply DM me on Instagram with this keyword and I will send you it. It's a PDF, free to use, free to reference to if you want to, you know, share with your parent being like, hey, I want to travel abroad. Here's her experience. Because some people might want to read something as opposed to watching a video of different learning styles, right? But anywho, I'm just rambling right now. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.